Here we are, everyone. It's so good to see you. I am excited for this session to see how it goes. I see a few of you already have a head start cleaning the uh, garbage disposals on the list today. And we're going to talk through cleaning your sink. But even if maybe your sink doesn't need it, or you already actually just cleaned your sink, uh, just still use this time as a co-working time. Pick a small spot. I think a part of the um, concept that I'm hoping we all learn and have reinforced in our minds this week is that we get a lot more done when we narrow down what we're trying to do. When we think about like, I'm going to clean the kitchen. That's actually a huge job. And it's also a vague job because what does it actually mean? And when do we get to say that the kitchen is clean enough? So if we narrow down and say, I'm going to spend 15, 20 minutes cleaning my sink, then, um, we get a lot more done. We notice a lot more and we notice that we made progress. We actually um, get somewhere in our work because we narrowed down our focus and uh, we're very clear about what we were working on so we don't get quite so distracted. So um, I have slides there's a checklist. We're going to have fun cleaning together today. Glad you're here live if that's where you are. And if you're on the replay, pretend you're live with us, right? Okay. So let me find those slides. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. All right, we're going to clean our sink today. But if you already have a clean sink, then just pick a, another small area, maybe your stovetop, uh, maybe a little space, like a sink size space of counter, and you can still follow through these same steps. Okay, so what do you need to get started today? You need rags, you're just cleaning cloth, whatever it is that you use to get stuff clean, uh, whatever kind of cleaner you like to use, and maybe you just need water, depending on your kind of cloth. Uh, but However you clean things, let's be ready, have our stuff and clean things. A container, and that's going to be maybe less important today. It depends on the status of your sink. <laughs> um, but a container to put in the things that just need to be dealt with later. We're going to clear and clean our one spot, and sometimes that means dealing with other stuff later. And then a timer. You can see in the little window here, I have a timer for us today. And you can set your own timer if you want to use different times. And uh, I, what I want us to experience is getting a visible amount of work done, of cleaning done in a short amount of time, just to realize what's possible. So, um, you can follow along with the checklists. If you share this workshop with a friend, you can use the green button below. If you're here on Crowdcast, you can just use the share button or the link on YouTube. Uh, you can forward the email if you got the email notification. There are all kinds of ways that you can share, and I don't really care how you share. <laughs> but we have a checklist if you do share with friends because we really appreciate that. So I spent a little extra time thinking it through and making checklists for all these to have a thank you gift for you if you share this workshop. So you can get that if you share, and then you can email support simplifiedorganization.com and my assistant Virginia Lee will send you that set of checklists. It's a checklist for every day. Okay. Naomi, way to go that your sink is clean. Acknowledge that, right? Say, 
yay, my sink is clean, so I can do something else right now. That's a win. Okay, so we have our stuff. We have our uh, timer set to go. And just a little reminder before we get started, or maybe as you are um, collecting your things, making sure, uh, let's see, Liz is getting her barkeeper's friend ready. <laughs> but we are co-working. We're doing this together at the same time, you know, using this video as the timer and our work session, because having a limited amount of time helps us to focus and we have more fun when we're working together, when we know that we're not the only ones who have a dirty sink, whose sink needs attention or who have, you know, different places that we just need to regularly come back to and address. And then we're also going to notice the before and after and acknowledge our work. Having a before and after picture is super helpful. Just to recognize what we do, because sometimes we do our housework and we don't, instead of acknowledging what we did and noticing what we did, we do the work and then say, well, I didn't really do anything today. Or, you know, I could have also, and we see all the things that we didn't do or how much we um, would have liked to do as well. And so we spend more time thinking about what we didn't get done rather than what we did get done. And so a before and after picture is a great way to um, help ourselves pause and recognize what did get done. And But I don't know about you, I always forget to take before and after pictures, <laughs> even when um, that's... Um, what I was going to do, but it's hard to remember. So I'm going to remind you. So just a reminder, our plan of attack this week, today, we're going to clean the sink. Tomorrow, we're going to clear our island of sanity. Then on Wednesday, we're going to tidy our bedside table. We're going to clear our entrance hot spot on Thursday and Friday. We're going to clean all the bathroom counters. So that's, it's going to be a full week, but a fun week. And every session is just going to be 20 minutes. Okay. You go ahead and get started if you want to, but first take that before picture. Don't forget. Um, take a before photo of what you are cleaning up. And a part of what this before, it, it helps you see with the before and after how much progress you made, but also that photo is where you're working. So think of it as like, I'm focusing in on this spot right now. So if you're doing not your sink, your attic or your bedroom, take a picture of one spot, not the whole room. Choose, focus in on one spot where you're going to make a difference and take a picture of that one spot. Totally okay if you work on a different spot. You can... Okay, so here is, and then you can start your timer and I'm going to start mine. All right. Start. All right, here we go. Now I did mine in less than 20 minutes. It took just under 15. So here is my before. My sink has definitely been worse than that, but this was this morning. Um, and I did clear the breakfast dishes first because <laughs> that's a kid job. So this was after there are still dishes there that the dishwasher emptier should have put away, but Somehow that just always gets missed. So there are clean dishes there on the side of the sink. For some reason, the knives never get washed. I, I don't like them going in the dishwasher and they just collect there until I need one and wash them. So that's reality. You can see I have stuff on the windowsill. Uh, again, it's not terrible. <laughs> it's definitely been worse. And um, yeah, it needs attention. And I will also say that 10 minutes after I finished, I went back into the kitchen and there were there were crumbs and things in the sink, but that's what the sink is for. So we are not working on our sink here so that now it's gonna be beautiful forever in our all time. We're just keeping it up. 
we're getting it to a place where we can maintain it daily. And in between those daily tidyings, uh, it's going to be used, and that's what it's for. So always remember that the purpose of the sink is to hold and clean dirty dishes. That means a lot of dirty business is happening here. So it's okay that it's going to get dishwasher. <laughs> I just read the word dishwasher in there. So it's okay if it's going to get dirty <laughs> and need washing. All right. So this is my little sad sink <laughs> in our rental also. So I think that's another reason why it didn't take me quite so long. Um my previous sink in the house we just recently moved from and sold, it was a big single basin apron front, beautiful copper sink. And it was beautiful and it held a lot of dishes. It was nice and deep and one big uh, basin, but it also took longer to clean because it was um, um, copper. And so I don't know, it was, it was supposed to make it easier because the patina is like a thing that it's okay. But anyway, it, it just kind of, anyway, it wasn't as easy and quick to clean as a stainless steel stink, sink, even though it was more beautiful. So here we go. As you get started, hopefully you've taken your before photo now. And now if you're doing your sink, spend five minutes washing any leftover dishes. And then if there are any after five minutes, just move them to another spot for now. So I'm gonna tell you when it's five minutes, if you have any dishes, any knives, any whatever needing to be washed, just spend five minutes doing as much as you can. So you're gonna to try to get as much done as you can in five minutes. And if there's anything left, just move them out of your sink spot for now. This is a beautiful sink here. <laughs> But yeah, you know what what the time that it takes to clean a sink really depends on the kind of sink that you have, the size, uh the counter around it. Um you know, I had granite counter before and it was much easier to just wipe things off. You can kind of see over here there are some stains here that I didn't realize because it was covered <laughs> by dishes and things for quite some time. And um, that took quite a bit of scrubbing with magic marker, whereas I, I just didn't even think that it would stain because I'm just I was used to granite before and it just wipes up quickly. So, you know, the different materials that we have at different points in different kitchens makes a difference in how much time and attention our sink takes to clean. And um, when we also set ourselves a very small job, like washing dishes for five minutes, where we're not saying, I'm going to wash all the dishes, but I'm going to spend five minutes washing however many dishes I can wash, we actually tend to get more done when we set the job requirement like that. Um, <laughs> if, so just do, just wash as many as you can in five minutes. Not only because that will take less time, when we're, our job right now is actually to just clean the sink area around the sink and in the sink and not finish all the dishes, but also, um, if we say, I'm going to wash all the dishes, there is that rule, I forget who it's named after, what the name is, but a job will expand to fit the amount of time allotted. So instead of focusing on uh, a particular job, a whole job, um, like cleaning a whole kind of thing, cleaning washing all the dishes or cleaning the whole kitchen. It's really easy to have that kind of job just drag out because we don't even have a set amount of time to do it. It's just do the job and it can kind of get draggy. We can get draggy. But if we say, I'm going to spend five minutes washing the dishes, like five minutes doesn't seem long and it's going to be over quickly. So that means that we can just 
zoom our attention and pour our energy in really quickly for five minutes because it's not interminable. It's not for forever. Um, but we can work fast and we actually will get more done if we set a time limit for a job and not a job limit. So you don't want to like try to combine both and say, I'm going to wash all the dishes in 10 minutes because that might not be possible. You pick one. And what I, what my contention is, is that if you set a time limit, you're going to get a lot more done because also if a kid comes in or and needs something, you can say, hold on five minutes. I'm doing this for five minutes and then I can help you. And that, that is good experience for the children to have to wait five minutes. It's usually possible as long as we're not talking about babies crying or someone fell out of their high chair. <laughs> there are exceptions, but for the most part, it's like, okay, I could just do this for five minutes and five minutes is a chunk of time. I cannot allow an interruption so I can do this. And then when we recognize how much we can get done in five minutes, then we can say, oh, so maybe if I just spend five minutes, like three times today and tomorrow, I can really make a big headway in this spot that seems overwhelming. This seems crazy. Like I can't handle that. So no matter how much you have left over now, time to stop. It's been about five minutes now. So stop washing your dishes and just move them out of your sink area, like scooch them so that whatever you took a picture of your before picture, move them out of that frame. And we're now we're going to just deal with our sink. Yes, even if you're going to put those dirty dishes right back in, because you're going to feel better cleaning those dishes in the sink when it's clean, it's going to feel nicer. You're going to see that you did get something done and you didn't put it off. You know, like, oh, after I clean all the dishes, which is never going to happen because there's going to be another meal, <laughs> then I'll have a clean sink area. There's just a layer of debris and junk that we have to deal with day by day. And that's so now we're going to clear that space. That might be dishes, whatever dishes are left over. That might be things on your windowsill, the big refill of, of soap. <laughs> that's um, you know, whatever is in your picture frame, your before frame, just move it out. So it's totally clear and empty. If there's junk that doesn't really have a home, you can't just put it away or move it because it's going to be moved back after the space is clean, then put it in your container. This is my clear spot. I did leave the towel, our little dish drying that since we did have dishes drying there from being washed and that's fine usually that lives there anyway so um this is my clear area took everything off the windowsill took everything out of the sink um moved at the reef dish soap refill is actually supposed to be under the sink and not sitting by the sink because i don't like it on the counter <laughs> It's not attractive, but I did refill the um, dish scrubber first before I put it away. So now that it's all clear, wash it like whatever. Maybe it's just a rag and water. Um, I used um, I use all purpose cleaner. I clean with chemicals. I don't care. <laughs> So I actually filled the nice thing about having the tiny sink, little <laughs> tiny, um, shallow basin sink, like trying to look at the silver lining here. I can actually plug it up and like put some water in there and some concentrate just right in that and use it as a cleaning container, I guess, where in the big giant basin sink, um, that's just too much water to even get a little shallow bit of water. So I can't do that. But here I just plugged up. Actually, I plugged up this side of the sink because it was the dirtier side. Uh, it has a little stain here. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just soak that and filled it with a little bit of water and poured a little bit of all-purpose concentrate in there. 
And then um, I had a, a Wetex dishcloth. I don't know if you've seen these. Um, my friend gifted me some, but they're Swedish dish cloths and you actually wash them in the dishwasher but they are super absorbent little square sponges so they're really they're like hand size i really they're really nice to clean with uh, they don't because they dry out so quickly um they don't tend to stink and they're also easy to just stick in the dishwasher so you know that that smell <laughs> when the cloths have been sitting in the sink or just damp next to the sink or whatever is really gross. And these ones um, wipe things up really well and then they don't get stinky. So I used one of those and a flour sack towel, which sometimes I use a flour sack towel. Sometimes I just use an old cotton t-shirt from my husband, you know, one that has holes in it or whatever, I tear it up into rags and then so I can wipe things down wet, like the windowsill, the window, um, the ledge of the window, like where you open it. So like all the spaces. And then you can't really see it in the photo, but even the wall had splashes and splatters. And so I wiped all that and moved from top to bottom, wiping things down pretty wet. So it just wiped, wiped down really easily because it was pretty wet and a good sponge and then took the flour sack towel and just dried it all. Um, so there's no residue and it's all dry and it was um, really simple. You know, it's not like we need a ton of tools or anything, it's just a sponge and a towel and some cleaning fluid. Um, and yeah, the sponge was, a. it's called Wetex. I'll put a, oops. It won't let me send the message. Okay, there it went. Um, I'll put a link in the description in the replay afterwards. So we're just wiping things down. We're starting at the top, whatever is in front, the wall, a ledge, a window, wipe it all down. Wipe down that backsplash behind. And I don't know about you, but that spot behind the sink, like between the backsplash and the faucet just can collect a lot of gunk. Um, and again, it depends on the kind of materials that are there in your sink. They'd collect different kinds of gunk and there are differing levels of difficulty in getting it clean because um, the, you know, the copper sink that I had before just seemed to leave a film and the level of grime. Um, so um, anyway, this one wasn't too bad, surprisingly, even though it's um, not as nice. It was pretty easy to wipe up. So there is, there is that. All right, we only have five minutes left. Are you done wiping things out? We're wash washing the windowsill back behind the sink. Be sure to wipe down that faucet and anything else that's sticking up. You know, if you have a, a drinking water dispenser there, a little sprayer, um, whatever else is there with your faucet, wipe it down, wipe it out, get kind of around you know, wherever that faucet hits the counter or the sink sometimes gets a little bit grimy, wipe it out. Should just take about a minute, really. And then what we're going to do is um, scrub out the sink with dish soap and a scrubby. I actually just used my same little um, scrubber, my little sponge, uh, but there wasn't anything really stuck in the sink. Sometimes it might take a little, even a SOS pad or something to get out any stuck on grime. Another tool that I really like is a paint scraper. So like a metal um, paint scraper, you find it in the painting section at the hardware store. It's just a scraper. It's not a blade, but it's kind of close. So I don't let the kids use it because they could damage things. But if something is stuck on, I just have that tool and um, just quickly 
take off any caked on gunk. So then I can just wipe it clean. And that um, something that might take a lot of muscle power to scrub and scrub and scrub and get off is just like, it's, it's great to like for, I make bread. And so that bread dough, if that gets stuck on, that can be nasty or anything. If you have flour and water, the kind of paste that that can create on your counter can take a lot of work to get off, but a little scraper takes care of it in short order. A bench scraper, like a dough scraper also works really well. It's kind of the same thing. So if you have a garbage disposal, another um, great way to freshen up your sink area is to put a bit of lemon, like a little lemon wedge or a little lemon juice or vinegar, and then turn the faucet on and run it. That kind of disinfects and de-stinkifies the garbage disposal. Just let some water run down there. Um, Karen says that if you have a stainless steel sink, you can use WD-40 to restore a shine and minimize water spots. I didn't know that we might have to use that so we can get more of our damage deposit back at this rental. <laughs> uh, or Naomi uses old credit cards or gift or insurance cards as scrapers. That's awesome. I hadn't even thought about that, but that would totally work. And then you can just throw, like, you can just have a collection and when they get gross, throw them away. <laughs> so one thing I also did when I was cleaning out my sink, the little, um, drain covers. So our, um, the, yeah, drain things that go in there. I don't know what their proper name is. I stuck those in the dishwasher and, um, so they can run with the next load. So, I was like, oh, should I clean this? I'm like, I know I, I will clean it. I'll stick it in the dishwasher. Oh, yes, I will put a link to my bread recipe. It's actually on the blog. So if you go to simplyconvivial.com and search uh, for bread, it will come up. Yeah, the drain plugs. Thank you. Okay, and then last, you know, set out a fresh hand towel. That's just a nice touch. Sometimes it's hard to remember to replace <laughs> the towels until you're like, hmm, this is still damp. This has been damp a long time. Toss in a fresh hand towel and put the things back where they belong at your sink. So um, the so before our little dish scrubber thing, the it's the Dawn dish brush that you put the soap already in there, it stays in this thing here. Um, the jar had been put away with the other jars when I washed it one time because it was kind of grody in there. And then the kid put it away. So I found the jar and put this away properly and put things back, gave this a little dish because it doesn't have a home. We had a drawer for things like scrubbies at our last house and there isn't an extra drawer for that now. So this looks nice and tidy and it's not like this, it's shined, right? Some, some people want you to shine your sink and make it all beautiful, but this is just making it clean. We're just taking it back to a decent state because sinks do, they're a place where a lot of dirty things become clean. And sometimes we just need to remember to then clean the sink area. Whoop. There we go. Time's up. How did you do? Take that after photo. Um, I didn't make that a slide. So take your after photo. And if you want, I would love to um, see your before and afters. I think before and afters, I'm not on social media, but when I was, before and afters were my favorite kind of posts to do. And also to see, it's just fun to see that like, before, after, and like swipe between them. So share, now you have a before and after, you can share it. And I would love to see it if you want to email it when you um, ask for that workbook, or if you already have that, you know, just send me the photos, they're fun. I'll make sure that my assistant leaves them in the inbox for me to check out. And um, there we go. That's right. So Colleen says she's so excited. Her sink has been driving her crazy, but she wasn't taking the time because she thought it would take forever. Here you go. Awesome. 
That's right. It doesn't take forever, especially when you just zero in on what matters because it is so easy to get distracted, right? Um, you know, you could take all the time just washing all the dishes only and not getting to that kind of grime that builds up around the sink. And, um, or, you know, get distracted because you go to put something away and then you find another mess where that is and you start working there. And it's like, well, I just spent 30 or 40 minutes cleaning, but there is no um, difference because it was just all my attention was spread so thin, I didn't really get anywhere in any one spot. So what we're doing this week is just zeroing in on a small section and making a difference there. And um, yes. All right. Susan had a hard time stopping with the dishes at five minutes, but she did. And she says, I'm so glad I did. Yes. Rachel actually got all her dishes done in the five minutes. Good job. All right. So yes, keep reporting your wins too. And that, and look at your before and after, like swipe, show your kids, like have fun with it because, um, And it normally takes more than 20, Rachel said, but with the focused time, you got them done. There you go. So that is the thing. When we pick just a short amount of time and say, I'm going to do one thing in this short amount of time, whether I get it done or not, there's just a level of pressure that's removed. It's, there's one kind of pressure that's removed, and that's the pressure to do it all get it all done with a good kind of pressure added. And that is a time crunch. Time crunches help us get more done, but feeling like we have to get the whole job done. Er, that doesn't help. There, there are different, some pressures are good pressure and some pressures are not helpful pressures. And so I think that using the timer is one of those good kind of pressures. Yeah. Susan says it's more fun than an audiobook. Awesome. <laughs> That's saying something too. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Bobby Sue had a teamwork effort where her daughter washed the dishes and she cleaned up the compost mess under the sink. Woohoo. That's a big win. That's an extra. Um, Awesome. So Naomi, who was working on her attic because her sink was already clean, whoop, whoop, said that instead of a mountain of sorted clothes that was taller than herself, she now has seven labeled bins full in 20 minutes, and now they can walk across the attic. Excellent. Yes. Good job sharing your wins because sometimes we, well, a lot of times, we just need to remind ourselves that we did something because we tend to focus so much on what we would like to still do and what we didn't get done and the job's not finished and the housework, the dishes, that's never going to be finished. But we can just put a little time there, a little attention there, and it does add up. It does make a difference. And even when in, say, 10 or 15 minutes, a child puts a, a cup in the sink, puts a dirty dish in the sink or turns on the water and now there are splatters. Nothing's undone. You did it. You have the before and after proof and your work is not undone because your work isn't having a space picture perfect so that it stays that way. Your job is to tend and to keep. And so now that we have kind of a cleared and clean space here, if you do have the checklist, you'll see that a part of your checklist is to just spend two minutes or less wiping things out around there because it's not going to be that much and it's just going to help maintain and keep up and tend that spot uh, so that not that it stays perfectly clean or it continues to be a... Um, 
a wonderful place that never collects messes anymore, but just that we're putting our attention in the places where it does make a difference regularly, and that will build up. Uh, that will help our attitudes about our home. It will help our attitudes about our work. And um, it will help us to build the good habits that make things not get to the disaster point, or, or at least to get to the disaster point less often, because life happens. <laughs> Dishes build up, the sink gets dirty, but now you know 20 minutes is all it takes to uh, get it better. It, so we can talk ourselves down from that overwhelm ledge where we build it up and say, is this going to take forever to clean? It's like, no, it's going to take 20 minutes. I'm going to put on a podcast. I'm going to turn something on and just get it done. So we're going to keep doing this. Tomorrow is our Island of Sanity. And I'll put the link to a video about what your Island of Sanity is, if you don't know. And you get we all have different ones. Um, so, but that's what we're going to tackle tomorrow. So I look forward to seeing you then.